saying don't use bullets. I'm just saying one main point per slide. Images rule. Human beings like images. We relate. Images tell a thousand stories. They set a tone, right? That's the chair he died in. That's the bed he died in. We connect to that. Ask yourself before you even sit down, what's the one thing you want them to remember? Because really, you're going to give a presentation and talk for 30 minutes like myself. But you're only going to be remembering one thing, and I'll bet you it's probably Lincoln. <laughs> but what I want you to remember, what I want you to remember is, come see me if you want to learn more about this. Um, I messed it up. That is right. I don't have fancy animation. I don't have fancy fonts. I could. Why bother? Why spend all that time working on that? It's not what's important. Right? Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love all that stuff. It's really hard not to put it in, isn't it? But don't. It's a distraction. Share your presentation, link or upload it. A larger discussion, and I would love to have that discussion, so we gotta figure out a way to have that discussion, guys. Speaker notes for further explanation or details, I put that there so that I could go like this. Look, speaker notes. I've shared that with you. If you would like to know more, here are my favorite resources. This is how I started down this path. Presentation Zen. Oh my God, it will change your life. Brain rolls. Joe Mandina will talk about the process of, if I'm up here talking, where are your eyes? You're walking and thinking at the same time. Somehow your, your brain likes to learn and move at the same time, and movement helps you learn things better, that kind of stuff. Slideology is by Nancy Duarte. Duarte is the one who did Steve Jobs' uh, presentations, which are phenomenal, because he's also very charismatic. And online resources, Duarte Designs, Gar oh. Reynolds. Go watch some TED, TED Talks. You know, it's addictive, isn't it? spend hours wasted. That's not wasted. You always learn something, but yeah. And don't tank on me. And we'll just say, yeah. So all the links and everything I've talked about are in here. And I know that I need to wrap up because I'm two minutes over, but I do want to continue the conversation. Any thoughts or ideas? Yes. The other thing that I noticed, you know, don't use uh, superfluous animations <laughs> or fonts or colors. You use mostly black and white here. A little bit of red, a little bit, of, a mm -hmm. little bit of color. I, I reserve my colors for my images. Right. Right, because the black really highlights an image. Yes. I just wanted to mention one thing about like posting PowerPoints for students to watch later. If you add a narration, like you can either add a narration um, with slide share. Oh, you need to record. Or, yeah, your audio because if the they're top. missing the presence, if your presence obviously is the important thing. Right. And so if they're missing that, either attaching the transcript or, you know, recording would be very helpful. You can throw out your iPhone in the middle of this and get your audio recording of class and mm -hmm. put it up mm -hmm. next to it mm -hmm. if you want. That would work too. There's, there's a lot of ways around that. Is there any way around the fact that if I want to do a slideshow, I, I have, I need, I do need help at this point. I have. Um, media services come and help me hook things up and is there a way that's you know that's the beauty of having Google presentation I just walked over here with my first my phone and my keys I don't have to hook anything up you're not hooked up to your computer I'm yeah. hooked up to this computer right okay Can but generally the teacher station's okay yeah but I do want to address that so uh, let's figure out how to get get that help to you let's is it because you're doing your presentation on your laptop Students are doing I've tried both ways. Yeah. What is it? Students or you? Me. Okay. Yeah. Well, if I want to do this, to, you know, it just. I wish. Yeah. I wish there was an iPad with a remote that I could just right. If there's no remote iPad that will just project onto a screen without. That's Apple TV. Apple TV. Yeah. That's what Apple that's TV. What, that's what yeah. I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, but even that with. It, here's the thing. I know my technology, so it's very easy for me to go to point A to point B. So the expertise comes with use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Repetition, yeah. 
So now I'm comfortable with it, and now I just curse at it. doesn't work, but usually I can butter it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so you didn't have to have this on a computer when you didn't use it? No, it's on Google Presentations. It's right up here, and if you wanted to, you go, oh, and the other, the other really <coughs> cool thing. The, the way that she accessed it is by logging into My St. Mary's and going to Google. <coughs> oh, okay. Instead of bringing her a thumb drive or a laptop, oh. she logged in to get it. Okay. How do you save it on that? It automatically it saves. Oh. So I needed... Um, <coughs> oh, look, my research is all right here in one place for this presentation. I got all my images right there. And if I click on any image that I have up at the top here, it gives me the source. Mm. Get it in here. Ah, it was giving me the source. Oh, I saw it down there at the bottom. Here we go. So that's where I got that image. So it's automatically citing it for me if you will in a, in a way. Um, Rita, yes. I have to like just touch on a little press what Karen Linda had mentioned. It feels like to, we really promote doing things, especially if you're having your students do presentations, promote them using like Google presentations because again, nothing is tied to their laptop. What has happened several times, more than several times. It happens happened, all the time. <laughs> every term that they they will or our faculty will you know, create it on their laptop or their desktop machine, then they'll put it on a thumb drive, and then they'll right. try to present in the class, and then there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. The links don't work. It's because some part of the presentation is still in the original machine, you mm -hmm. know? So this is why it's good to do these things, like all online. It's all, like, just kind of together, right there online. You know, so you never have to worry about switching from one classroom to the other to the office, home, and et cetera. But also all at the same it. time, I get a little worried. Mm -hmm. So it's so I still have back in my office this downloaded as PowerPoint presentation in case I didn't have internet access. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> always good to have a backup plan. So you can go but, file. You know, always good for that. But uh, really just download that. Mm -hmm. But and and even with that um, backing it up, you could back it up to Dropbox, and so you still would never have to carry a flash drive or anything like that. If I don't have an internet connection, Dropbox isn't going to help. Sure, sure. You could create a PDF. Also, I mean, as a backup, yeah, yeah, backup yeah, there's plan. The, yes, there's many ways to do it. It's just you still need the. Uh, I knew it was working today, but if I'm going somewhere else, I'm gonna have it in like three different ways. <laughs> I'm gonna have it on my phone, and I'm gonna have it over here, and I'm gonna have it in the cloud because that's just who I am. I don't, I don't trust the world mm -hmm. to let me. But also on the other side, you don't know if you're gonna go to a convention and speak. You don't know how reliable the you know the internet connects. But you can ask them there, and they can say, "Oh, it's great." And then you get there and you go, "I'm not connected." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So always. But at the same time, it was just it's just so easy because you don't need the fancy stuff. You don't need the Google presentations. You don't need any of this. I can just walk right on over here, and I'm done. They didn't care. I carried my small little. I didn't carry a laptop with me. I didn't carry anything with me. I just walked right on over. It's so nice. It's so free not to have to lug all that stuff around. So yeah. I'm assuming then that if you have some really good, reliable PowerPoints that you can can you just put Yeah, it you on can you can upload them. Upload it's it. like just like, you know, when you take a PowerPoint to a keynote or from one version to another, some stuff does get lost. But it's always better to just so I'm worried about things like formulas. Fair enough. If you've got advanced stuff, yeah. you can still upload that to Google Drive. Because you can up upload any kind of file. And, and it's not a bad idea. If anything, let's just say you have PowerPoint presentation and one of those slides or a few of those slides have a formula. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you upload the presentation. It will actually warn you if certain things are going to be pre-formatted. And then it will be quite obvious which slides didn't really get brought over. It may look a little weird. Mm -hmm. And you just have to replace that slide. You know, and you just replace that slide within and if you want help for the most part if you would like to do one together right so that means all those modifications have to be done in Google presentation right? from that point on yeah sure. I mean it, everybody so each document you upload is a little bit different yeah. because so I'm thinking of some of the my PowerPoints with very heavy on formulas and equations right but you can you can translate those well. into images very right. easily and if they're images, I can just drag them in with no problem. If it's an image, I can just drag and drop, literally, from my desktop onto here and upload it, put it right there, and we're done. So it's really easy to, to rebuild it.
But I would have both. I would have it at a Google presentation and I have a So I had at the end of my class, and this is kind of typical from a lot of classes where people we have students do presentations to their work during the semester. And so what I did is I had everybody uh, email me their PowerPoints that they were going to use when they weren't required to use them. And then I loaded them onto my laptop and I saved them with their name so that the, the time going between one presentation and it was almost seamless because I got up there and I just switched from that name to next and then we went. Now if they do it Google-wise, this means that every student is going to have to get into their own My St. Mary's, right? Unless they share it with you. Then it would all be yeah. Oh, okay. So how, this is how I would do it. Is I would create a folder for that. Right, for shared. For shared and make them upload and share stuff and put it in that folder. Okay. That way you don't have to do it. And then, and then in between, so when one person gets done, they, they go back to the 